So now we're going to talk about oxygen and oxygen delivery devices. Now oxygen is like any other drug, it has risks associated with it, so we need to actually make sure we've assessed the patient properly and that the medication oxygen is actually indicated in this patient. We need to think about any contraindications. We need to talk to the patient and talk about their concerns, get their consent and actually make sure we've got the right patient, ask for their name, date and birth, check their wristband and then we actually need to prescribe that oxygen and decide how we're going to deliver it. Now when we're assessing the patient you're obviously going to look at things like their observations, so the main ones being respirate and their oxygen saturations with an oxygen saturation probe and then you may in certain unwell patients, especially COPD, require an ABG and that can also tell you if they're retaining um, CO2 which we'll talk about later when we get to the Venturi. So now we're going to look at some oxygen delivery devices starting with a nasal cannula. So nasal cannulas are usually used for mildly hypoxic patients, usually not very acutely unwell and these can deliver around 24 to 30% oxygen concentration from two to four liters flow rate. They can go up to 36% at six liter flow rate, but uh, you usually want to use humidified oxygen for that because it can cause quite a dry nose. So this end, we connect to an oxygen cylinder or a flow meter on the wall. And this end are the two nasal prongs that go into the patient's nose to deliver the oxygen. The next oxygen delivery device we have is a simple mask, also known as a Hudson mask. This is used for patients who are slightly more hypoxic um, or more acutely unwell because it can deliver oxygen concentrations between 30 and 40 percent between a flow rate of 5 to 10 litres per minute. So here's what a simple mask looks like. You'll often have two-way valves here and we actually have a nebulizer attachment here which we can attach to this mask and actually put medications into the nebulizer that the patient can then inhale. So we have some saline here, we just check the drug name and expiry date and then we can put this into the nebulizer which we then attach back onto the mask and then we'd attach our oxygen either from a cylinder or from a flow meter on the wall to the bottom of the mask and now that's ready to go on our patient's face to cover their nose and mouth. Okay, so the next oxygen delivery device we have is the Venturi mask, which are attachments that can go onto a simple mask like this and can give you precise control over the flow rates and oxygen concentration that you're giving to the patient. So this can be really useful in situations such as people who retain CO2 with COPD so each of these attachments actually has both the flow rate that they work at and the oxygen concentration written on them. So this one says 24% oxygen concentration at 2 litres per minute. So it's not that much different to a nasal cannula this one, but it's a lot more precise and there's a lot less variation and less variables that come into that. So it can be much better at maintaining those saturations 
at your target saturation, so 88 to 92% in someone who's retaining CO2. And this works much like the simple mask that we saw. You just put on these attachments and then you connect your oxygen. But it's really important with these to understand that they will only really work as labeled at the flow rate that it says. Any less, it obviously won't have the same oxygen concentration that's written on it, but also any more, it won't actually go above that concentration. So this is now ready. If you turn the oxygen on, we can put that on our patient. Again, just covers the nose and their mouth. Our final device that we have here is the non rebreathe mask. So, this looks very similar to a simple mask, but it has this extra bag added on the bottom. And this allows us to create a sort of reservoir of oxygen that will then be added to the air that the patient breathes in through the mask. The other difference is the valves on the side are usually just one way valves. So they allow CO2 to come out, but they shouldn't be allowing atmospheric air to come in and mix with the air coming in from the mask. So these masks are actually used for very acutely unwell patients. So often even before you've found out what their oxygen saturations are, if someone's crashing, for example, or peri-arrest, you can put one of these on and you set it to 15 litre flow rate and then that will deliver around 60 to 80% oxygen concentration. Um, so it works very similarly, but we connect the oxygen here on the side of the mask. And then this would attach again to your wall or oxygen cylinder. And you would set the oxygen flow rate to 15 liters. So I'll now put this mask on the patient, but the thing to do first is actually turn on the oxygen, cover up this valve with your finger and allow that bag to inflate just so we know the reservoir is ready and the patient's going to be breathing a high percentage of oxygen. And that's all the oxygen devices we're looking at today. Obviously, if a patient needed a higher concentration of oxygen, we'd have to start thinking about asking for help and they might need intubating, or there are non-invasive ventilation methods that can be used, especially for people retaining CO2. Um, it's important to remember everything we said at the start, that oxygen is a drug, it has risks associated with it. We need to think about actually properly assessing the patient, thinking about do they need it, what are their oxygen saturations, what's their respirate, and then we need to think about the safety implications, so make sure that we're turning off the oxygen after, we have, after the patient doesn't need it, because it is a fire risk. An important risk to consider when giving oxygen is obviously in those COPD patients, they can actually retain CO2, because the increased oxygen reduces their respiratory drive. The way we check this is with an ABG when they're on the oxygen. If that CO2 is creeping up, then we can often knock down the saturation targets to be that 88 to 92%. And that's when you have to start thinking about using a venturi mask to actually get those specific oxygen concentrations you're looking for. Also, in a normal healthy patient, you'd be aiming for those saturations of around 94 to 98%.